A few weeks ago, we took this photo here, and a lot of you guys, when you went to replicate what I did in that photo, you said, it's all white, it's not working. Why isn't it working? In this video, we're gonna talk about light pollution and how you can get around it in pro mode on your Android phone. Let's get into it. G'day guys, Shane Austin here. I do two videos each and every week all about mobile phone photography and small sensor photography, usually in low light situations. So if that's the sort of thing that you're into, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and if you have done this already, you're a bloody legend. This week we're talking about light pollution with your Android phone and how we can deal with light pollution in pro mode to shoot the stars. The best way to get out of light pollution problems is to get away from the light pollution. I've done a video all about light pollution, how to plan for astrophotography. I'll link it up the top here. And if you haven't watched that and you've got this sort of problem, definitely go and watch that video first. But in a nutshell, light pollution, the best thing to do about light pollution is move the hell away from that light pollution. If it's something like the moon, well, you can't move away from that. And tonight we're going to show you how to deal with that. To get your head around how light pollution works and the best way for you to get around it, regardless of the device that you're shooting with, you need to understand the exposure triangle. The exposure triangle exists for all levels of photography, regardless of the device that you have. In one corner, you've got the ISO, that is how bright the or how sensitive the sensor on that camera is to light and how much it processes that light and enhances that light. On the other corner, you've got the aperture. And on most mobile phones, the aperture is a fixed aperture. We can't adjust that. So that kind of negates that part of the triangle. And the other point of the triangle is the shutter speed and how fast or how slow that shutter will remain open. The longer it remains open, the more light that comes in. So when you think about those three aspects of exposure and you've got another problem coming into that, you have only three things that you've got to deal with is the shutter, the aperture and the ISO. And on phones and on GoPros and things like that, we've only got the shutter and the ISO. So when you think about you've just taken a photo and it's too bright, you need to bring down the ISO or bring down the shutter. That's it, that's all you've got to play with, those two things. And if you bring those down so far and you still can't shoot stars, it's just too bloody bright and you're not going to achieve it. So what we'll do in the morning, we'll hop in the van, we'll go to a location that I know that we're going to see the galactic core just rising slowly above the horizon and we're at the last phase of the moon, the uh, waning crescent, and we'll see that slight slither of the moon and it's going to play havoc with our astrophotography. And we're going to get around that by adjusting the ISO and the shutter speed. So look. So we're out here where we're going to take the photo of the van. It's a pretty clear night. There's a little bit of cloud way out that side of the, on the horizon out there in the west, but um, out in the east, well, I can even see the stars, um, the galactic core I can't see, obviously, that gaseous cloud, but I can see that line of stars going straight across the sky and it looks mint. The downside of where we are and the time of year that it is, is, well, well, the time of the month, I suppose, is that sucker right there. It's a small little slither of a moon and it's probably going to get in our way, but we'll make the most of what we've got. So I've parked up the van just here I've got the tripod set up just here and because it's nice and early in the morning the coffee is just underneath there. And what we're going to do is I've composed the van in such a way using photo pills. I've composed the van in such a way that it's sitting with the galactic core rising from the back behind the van and coming over the top of the van slightly and um, we'll try a few different locations here to shoot in front of it and around the side a little bit and we're lighting the subject just the subject not the stars and the people a few people commented on another video i did about when i was shining the torch in front and they said i had no idea that you needed to shine the torch at the stars to get them to light up it's not how it works the torch is purely for the van it's purely to light this up and that's it nothing else so i'll set up the phone we'll set up the torch and we'll take a photo I can tell you now that with the amount of light that we've got going on, there's going to be a little bit of toing and froing, testing out um, different shutter speeds and different ISO levels to get this so it's not all blown out white. So the, uh, the starting point that I would normally use would be 30 seconds and 3200 on the S21 Ultra. But tonight, because we've got that bit of moon there, uh, I think we're going to reduce it a bit. Well, we'll see what happens. We're going to get into the camera. I've already tested it at 3200 ISO and it doesn't look that bloody good. So we're going to leave it at 1600 and leave it at 30 seconds. I'll push the 
start button, the shutter button, and what I'm going to do now is walk around and I'll paint the light onto the side of the van and stop it there. Then I'll head back to the front of the van and I'll try it there as well. What would be good though is if we could light inside the van. And I think I know how we can do that and I'll try it in just a second. That photo is nearly done. It looks all right, it looks pretty bright. Probably looks too bright. It is too bright because I've got too many bloody lights on here. So I'll turn this video recording light off and we'll try it again. Now it takes a little bit of mucking around and I tried a few different combinations of ISO and shutter speed. And if you think it's like a case of walking up here and just pushing a button and going for it, well, what I did tonight, I set up my other GoPro on a night lapse and uh, you can see how much stuffing around I did. Here, have a look. So what we ended up with was uh, ISO 1600. Shutter speed is 30 seconds. The focusing is different. So we're going to go into manual focusing. I shine the torch onto the van and with the Samsung S21 Ultra, we've got focus peaking. So you'll see green parts light up on the subject and that will tell you that that's in focus. So we've got as close as we can to uh, infinity focus and it's probably down two bars if you like on the on the focus lines um, and that's where I've got the most amount of the van in focus and I think we'll have a lot of the, the stars in focus we'll hit the shutter and we'll have a look so I was pretty lucky with that one I only really needed to adjust the ISO I went lower with the shutter speed it didn't give me as many stars, so I increased that back again to 30 seconds. I do get the little star trails, but that doesn't bother me too much. Um, if I start stacking images later on in another video, it'll certainly bother me then, and I'll deal with it then. But as far as getting the light right in this photo, all I needed to do was adjust that ISO down to 1600 and shoot for 30 seconds, and I came up with that photo. Now, you may have seen that I was talking about um, lighting that vehicle from inside, and I had an idea around it. Well, that Renault that we've got, that little traffic van, it's got a delayed internal light, the interior light, so you can open a door, close a door, the light will stay on for, I think it was like 10 seconds or 15 seconds, I can't remember now. And all I did was I hit the shutter button, I counted down when I closed that door, when that light was slowly going out, and I waited until I had one second left of light, hit the shutter button, so I had one second of light from that internal light, in like the internal light and the interior light in the car, and I got the interior lit up, shot for 30 seconds, ISO 1600, and I got this photo. Now, what would have happened if I still couldn't get it there with 1600? Well, I would have went to ISO of 800 and shot for 30 seconds. And if I still couldn't get it, it was still too bright. Then when I'm at 800 and, it's, and, and to the naked eye, it looks pretty dark, at ISO 800, then I'd start bringing that shutter speed back 25 seconds 20 seconds 15 seconds and keep working those two back until you capture the stars but i'm telling you now if you get to say iso 400 and the shutter speed of 10 seconds you're probably not going to capture too many stars anyway and it's just too damn bright where you are and you may as well throw the hat in it's not going to work for that particular occasion but at some point you're going to find the nice little sweet spot if you like where the ISO is where it is, the shutter speed is where it is, and you take a photo and the stars look good, then you need to worry about painting with light the subject in the foreground. And the torch that I use, it's an adjustable torch, so you can adjust the brightness of that torch, and that is really important. Once you've got the sky right, then you can adjust the brightness of the torch and light the foreground subject. Another thing that's worthwhile doing, and I do this every single time I go out and shoot stars at night, is I've got my photo in mind about the plant around the planning that I've done this is where I'm going to post my car or subject or whatever it is with the Milky Way rising up behind it what I always do though is turn around and see what's behind me because quite often you can get some pretty cool photos from what's behind you as well as what's in front of you it's really just about exploring the environment that you're in shoot what you've planned to shoot and then just have a bit of fun 
set the timer up, go and stand in front of the camera and get yourself in the photo. You can do all that sort of stuff. It's, it's really up to your own imagination. All the photos that we've seen here today have been edited in Lightroom using my presets from phonephotoschool.com.au. Head over there, they're five bucks each, or well, five bucks for the set, I should say. That's five Australian dollars. So in the US, it's probably $3.50 maybe. Cheapest chips helps me keep this channel going and getting new gear that I can show you and review for you. All right, guys, that's it for today. I'll catch you later.